Hello, guys. Hey, good. That was, that was quite the intro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were not expecting this, I guess. <laughs> Cool, cool. So I'm I'm gonna blabber last night. I'm gonna give you guys stage. It's gonna be all yours, but I just wanna tell the audience, just in case they have any doubts and questions, they can use the chat option there. And uh, I'll be monitoring the chat throughout the session and I will pick some interesting questions for you guys to answer in the end. So I'm just gonna leave and the stage is all yours. Okay. See you guys. Uh, David, I'm going to use you as a confirmation. Are you able to see my screen? I am, and uh, I just Let's want to started. make sure that that's actually showing up as full screen for everyone. Yes, okay, great, perfect. Okay, uh, David, do you want to get started? Sure, so why don't we kick it off then? Um, thanks, everyone, uh, for joining us. So uh, Benki and I are going to take you through the rewrite of a very complex uh, payments processing service uh, that we did iteratively and safely um, over the course of a uh, number of different months. So um, I'll be the, uh, the hype man for the presentation, and I'll let Benki actually talk about most of the substance. But uh, briefly, I'll talk a bit about the background. Um, so the customer that uh, we were working with here um, was a large government client, an executive agency that is really all about providing one-stop access to government services through uh, various different channels. So you know, online, over the phone, at a digital kiosk, uh, in person at one of its service centers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, very much a multi-channel uh, organization. And um, when it comes to government services, taking payments uh, and also paying out um, is a very, very big part of actually uh, providing those services to the public. So this organization spends uh, over $10 million just in collecting payments and collects over $3.5 billion worth of payments every year. Um, so we're just gonna take you through the story of um, what the journey was for them to realize that you know, rewriting this uh, payment system was uh, something they wanted to do and was in fact achievable. And, and hopefully through the course of this, you'll learn some tips and, tips and tricks that you can apply within your organization as well. Um, so, Dennis, this point was uh, actually a desire that this customer had to um, to modernize their existing payment system. And where, where did that come from? Well, they their their legacy payment system, the existing one they had before they started talking to us, had some issues. Uh, there were some issues with reliability, as in it would go down every now and then, which as you can imagine, is quite frustrating for customers who are trying to make a payment to, say, uh, obtain a fishing license or uh, working with children's check. Um, because to actually complete that transaction, you need to uh, affect payment. So it's very frustrating for the citizens. And um, it, it also had some major maintainability and scalability issues. So um, we'll go a little bit deeper into that but essentially for every se separate channel, they had to, um, if they wanted to make changes that would uh, affect all channels, they had to change a bunch of different code bases. There was no commonality, no API enablement of this system. Um, so we got together with them, we started to discuss, you know, what could we do? And it really centered around, we wanna build a new payments platform. And the way we wanna do it is incrementally, iteratively, safely, building testing in rather than relying on separate QA teams, making release management much, much easier rather than you know, uh, horrendous uh, coordinated effort uh, requiring loads of different people. So the new payment solution for us success criteria was that it should enable payment collection across four channels, leveraging common APIs, leveraging uh, common functionality where appropriate, achieve a straight through processing rate of over 
and become a robust, highly available and scalable solution. So get rid of those robustness issues and make it very, very easy to achieve zero downtime releases in a boring, safe manner. So I'll, I'll take it. Um, so uh, thanks for that, David. Uh, so just to set some context, uh, like what David mentioned, the client had a, a whole suite of uh, systems that were collect that were used for collecting payments. And uh, the problem was, if you look at this in a, a broader government context, there were plenty of other government executive bodies that were having the similar setup. So if there has to be consolidation and some kind of a broader government benefit, then this this entire thing had to be uh, brought together. And in order for us to achieve that, uh, there were a bunch of pain points and drivers to reach there and for this solution to actually scale to that uh, whole of government context. The first one was adding of new transactions in to this uh, existing payment system was a big pain. It was a six to uh, nine month project. Um, the second one was a high support cost. Um, the third point was a straight through processing rate, which is what percentage of uh, payments being collected required some kind of a manual intervention. So the initial thought was uh, initial kind of a benchmark that we, they had was around 85 percent. And uh, for the new system, we, went, we wanted it to be greater than 99. And the last bit was poor customer experience. And we, when we say this, it's nothing to do with the uh, UI, it's nothing to do with the experience, but it's the outages, it's the issues caused in the payments overall flow rather than the UI per se, it's what the API does for them. So those were the key drivers. And uh, so when we undertook this journey, and this is how this journey looks now. So we started off in the first quarter of 2019. Our idea was first, we wanted to set up a foundation uh, by looking at this as a whole of common solution. Then we wanted to uh, then leverage, and uh, that included some kind of a reconciliation back office world that we can uh, build first. Then we added a digital uh, channel uh, uh, solution on top of it. Then we enhanced the digital capability. And uh, towards the second half of this year, uh, we have started building an over-the-counter channel, automating the back office processes, and also very close to achieving PCI DSS. So that's the uh, uh, goal for uh, the second half of this year. So that's been the journey of this specific platform so far. So that's the background bit now. Let's get into the meat of it, right? Which is what was the approach that we took in order for us to actually rewrite this uh, kind of Goliath of a project. Uh, to, to understand the scale uh, of what we are talking about, this was a landscape that we inherited uh, when we started uh, this uh, journey. Um, as you see, uh, the client had six uh, payment systems. They started off the one, two, three, four, five, six actually is in the order of how they developed it. They started off with one, the digital channel, then uh, they moved into IVR. Then uh, they clo uh, the IVR is essentially a clone of digital, a clone of the code base rather. Uh, then the, they move to a first overhead, uh, over the counter uh, payment system. Then the over the counter and digital were cloned to create a kiosk one. Then this kiosk system was again moved, uh, sorry, this over the counter system was again cloned to create a second one that will work with a different agency. All of them integrated at the DB level. So, so I don't think I need to explain to this audience exactly how painful this looks to begin with. So this is what we wanted to actually decouple and start to look at how exactly we can make their life better. Um, the approach we took, and that kind of reflects on the title of this, was uh, we always knew, we always set ourselves three months target. As in, if the if the investment does not see return for in three months time, then there is something that has gone wrong. So we prioritize this entire journey of rewrite by looking at that because it's a lot easier to actually look at rewrite as a one year piece of work. Uh, but for us, the way we want to strangle this was, hey, you know what, let's identify what is going to give them the return. And in the process, we first started off by mapping the value chain, putting the current uh, flow and saying, if I have to use this in, in a whole of common context, what's the pain point? Driving the key business metric, identifying the solution and starting to prioritize, All right? So when we, as I said, when we looked at it, and this was way back early last year, early 2019, when we mapped out the payment 
uh, the pain points of using the current solution as a host for the whole garment, then what were the pain points? So I'm not going to go into the uh, detail of it, but as you see, it was in across every line uh, of the value chain. So if you look at the integration, the different channels and the back office, everything has its set of problems. Um, the next part was why should we rewrite? Okay, there are some pain points. What if we live with it? And what's the benefit that we will get in rewriting? So we wanted to quantify this. Uh, surprisingly, it didn't take much time. Um, so when we quantified this, we were looking at a whole of garment benefit by 2023 of around uh, $57 million per annum. Uh, that's consolidating this solution for a whole garment context. What's, what's garment going to get and what's the customers going to get indirectly as a result as well. So this was a key driver. This was a benefit business case and this is what was helping us drive it. And uh, after a year, year and a half, we are well and truly on track with the with the benefits that we lined up uh, early last year. So this is all fine. So you, you could have picked it up off a textbook, spoken about it. How did we go about executing this, uh, which is which is where I think for us the thrill was in terms of how are we going to execute it? How are we going to show value? Um, OK. Uh, any product manager will tell you the moment I be pick it up, uh, the key question is which problem do we solve first? So there are different schools of thoughts, and rightly so, and uh, and used for different um, scenarios. So for example, we uh, we first thought, okay, fine, can we just take the digital card uh, all the way, reconcile it, settle it all the way through end to end that way, or can we just split out and see if we can just put payment method after payment method into a microservice? So each of these are all viable ways to strangle uh, this uh, monolith that we had. Um, however, our, we used four key levers in terms of what was going, what is it that we can pick up? Uh, because all of them are potentially viable options, but what's how, which one, how, what's the method we use to pick up? For us, the answer was, what's going to give us the highest ROI? Um, what's going to have the least cost of development in terms of duration? and uh, and overall costs what's going to have minimal challenges to go live i don't want to put something into production and uh, you know what that will take another six months or try to put something into production that's going to take six months because of the challenges and what has the maximum uh, learning potential or re reduce the risk so these were the four key levers and uh, what we did was we actually went about looking at the pain points mapping out solutions and we actually ordered the solution that you see on the right based on what based on these factors so um if anyone is interested outside of the session we are more than happy to actually walk you guys through the method behind this madness uh it, because we actually had some metrics which we put the, the uh, values that we put for each of these so that we can come up with this uh, ordering so so this is the ordering that we came and uh, we said hey you know what let's start looking at the tackle the first item of and see how it goes from there on. So this um, was a hypothesis st hypothesis statement that we came up in last uh, Feb. So I, I've just put it as is in the slide. Our idea was instead of looking at this, uh, if you see this one as an as a, uh, as end where end to end where you look at the entire channel, we will. If you if you remember from our previous slides, this entire system was integrated at. Uh, the database level and uh, and every transaction every channel system had it uh, all sends their data in the same form to the same database so we said you know what let's just extract this out where we want the back office process to be done completely independently of the channels and how the payments was being collected processed and collected so we said we will build a, st a record store that will have apis that any channel system can call and um, just post the events and we will use that for all the back office processes and drive the reconciliation using it. So um, with that, the, our hypothesis, and we said we will be successful if any processing system that we build along the way or whatever is already there can just use this without causing any problems. This is what our first step looked like. So as I said, we actually built this store of records and we had four endpoints here. And all they do is call this, it publishes messages, and that message gets stored in our uh, DB. And uh, we had endpoints to just get the result. So the request, can, requesting a payment, canceling, 
completing it and any kind of reversal. What we did was we just made all the incumbent systems just post call those APIs uh, without affecting the processing, just asynchronous, just fire and forget uh, these four calls. And then any new system that we subsequently built did the same. And this is all we did in the first step. But that paved a way for us to build this roadmap because what the first solution did was it provided us the visibility of what happens in the payments um, life cycle. And it also started for the first time giving the uh, management of visibility of what is happening in the payment world. Payments world, what is uh, at a high level, how much are we collecting, how many are not, what are the different payment methods, who is sending, making what kind of payments are the lives. So the first release, um, as you see, we focused specifically on the back office world. There is no UI, nothing. It is only what we can. And by extracting it, what we realized was the channel systems can operate independently, and we can scale each of these uh, in its own way. So within two months, we were able to have a channel agnostic system of payment records. Then this entire thing, this, all these timelines are from the day we started. So in a couple of months, we reached there. Then a month from there, we actually started generating reports that are needed for reconciliation and settlement. This client of ours used uses a black line and SAP. So we did that. As we were doing this process, we started working on the digital channel itself. And our first aim was, can we give something to for all the new agencies to begin with where they can process using card? Then in six months time in that process, we were able to do card, PayPal, and BPay in, in and live and working. Then uh, in three months from then, we actually migrated all the transactions off a system so that we can decommission de that one. And in 12 months uh, from that point, um, we were actually able to, actually beginning of this year, we, we were able to onboard new agencies into the system. So and uh, now we have started the over the counter channel in the same way. Um, now we'll we'll just go into how did the architecture evolve uh, over time. Uh, David, over to you. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think with anything like this, it's very tempting to just go to a whiteboard and start drawing boxes and draw a beautiful new world. Uh, but you really need to think of how you're going to get to that beautiful new world. And um, so I'll, I'll just describe this a bit. Um, so exactly like Thank you was saying, you know, the old world was. Uh, a bunch of forked code bases that uh, had a bunch of duplicated logic that just dumped uh, data into the database, a shared database, in a consistent format. Integrating via database has you know, all the problems that I'm sure that you guys have seen or know about, which is uh, you're operating against the broadest form of API possible. Uh, anything you, that you can read from or write to in the database, uh, any application can do. Um, coordinating releases gets very, very hard. What if you want to change the data model? You have to kind of coordinate that release, do it in a safe way uh, across all of the databases. So what um, to you know, releasable components. Um, so the very, very first thing that we built, uh, just like Thank you was saying, the first problem we tackled was uh, recording and reconciliation. And so, you know, we built that out with its own uh, purpose-built database, uh, with uh, the ability for it to be very reactive, uh, to you know receive messages, write them to the database, uh, that sort of a thing, so that the existing clients, that sorry, the existing systems could use that. Um, that set us up very, very nicely for the digital channel to use that exact same API, right? So that the idea of reusability, we kind of proved that out very, very early on. Um, and then by building out the digital channel API, we started to, to figure out uh, patterns of integration, uh, patterns of architecture that we could replicate for other channels. Uh, you know, what's common amongst these channels, what's not? And that really put some positive design pressure on the system. So that by building out that digital channel, then you know, when we went to go and do over the counter, uh, the system already handled most most everything that was necessary, and um, we were able to get a whole heck of a lot of reuse out of it. But, I, and I think the key thing here as well is to make sure that you know, you're, not, um, you're not bending and contorting your systems to do things they shouldn't. So having a back end for front end in front of those uh, different channels to adapt to, to the actual uh, UI usage patterns 
was was really key to maintain a decoupled architecture that let us you know, release fast. And so the the principles that we went by um, that I'm I think you might have started to hear as I was talking through this is to actually guide the architecture by the business value, by the roadmap, by the user stories. So you know, the, the architecture and how it evolved really mirrored the way that we wanted to deliver the uh, value to the business that Anki talked through. The other very key thing that we did was we used architecture fitness functions. So um, automated tests in, in our case, using uh, primarily a tool called, called ArchUnit, which is a, a Java testing framework uh, for architecture to maintain certain uh, act, aspects of our architecture, like not having cyclical dependencies, uh, making sure that things were decoupled um, to, to keep us on track architecturally as we evolve the system. The other thing we did was we load tested uh, the, the components early and often, both individually and then uh, together as an end-to-end -end system. And we built that into our CI CD pipeline so that we'd have very, very fast feedback if we introduced what seemed like an innocuous change that actually degraded performance we would be able to pinpoint that and identify it very, very quickly at the commit level so that we could um, you know, fix that before it went into production and roll forward with the fix. So that really helped us. Those things really helped us evolve the architecture. Um, and this is just a depiction of how the architecture emerged over, over time. Now, first, uh, payments recording, that leading us into doing reconciliation from recording, and that leading us into a uh, new digital platform, building on uh, recording and reconciliation. And as we're going along, adding components, adding architectural complexity uh, and evolving the system over time to then introduce new payment methods, uh, which then followed a, a consistent pattern of uh, and a consistent API internally to that system. And then uh, making agency onboarding configurable. Once we had a bunch of knowledge about you know, operating a system like this in production, once we had a few examples of how to do this, then we could generalize. And that's really uh, the approach that we took that, that helped us have confidence in the direction in which we evolved our architecture, not, not overgeneralizing too early. Thank you, do you wanna comment yeah, a little cool. bit about So uh, like what David mentioned in the previous slide, this is where we are at the moment, right? Uh, we, we have a digital solution. Uh, we, we generate reports out of our back office system, uh, we, um, both for the agencies who want to use the payments and for reconciliation purposes. We have a portal which people can, a finance team agencies can use to manage to understand what has happened. We have got different payment methods that we accept and in the process also became the first uh, uh, payments uh, system from a government context to be able to take a uh, citizen payments using pay ID um, or um, new payment platform as they call it and uh, also the key aspect of it was we delayed the part where we actually can make this agency onboarding configurable so what used to take a nine month uh, project before has become a 10 minutes job right now where all we need to do is just configure add it add the URLs and give them the keys and everything is actually set up for any agency to uh, integrate with us in production. So uh, the last piece of it is, okay, this is all great, but we set out to achieve something. Where are we in that journey? Um, as I said, uh, we started off with a bunch of pain points and this is again, this has always been our go-to slide. Where are we? So we have addressed the pain points that we saw in the online, the client integration and the back office piece. Uh, so, and now we are predominantly concentrating on the assisted channel. Followed by that, we want to look at a back office automation, which essentially is how quickly can we make this end. Um, it's one thing to talk about success of an end-to-end -end process, but we want to automate it to the nth degree that even if there is a problem, uh, there's no manual intervention needed to actually recover or figure out what it is and things like that. So that's that's what we want to focus on next. Um, and overall, as I said, so what started off when we when we picked this journey as um, some uh, five agencies and ten odd transactions, we have been able to in this um, in this nine months of us being live add um, almost nine agencies and close to around twenty seven odd transactions um into the new platform 
Um, our straight through rate has been around 99.99%. Uh, this is a significant improvement from 85%, which was before. We have we have got 100% availability, and even our deployments are zero downtime. We deployed many times during the week, and um, just during the business hours, because that's when we are all there to monitor what is happening. So, so far, no downtime. It's always been up. Uh, in the process, we have collected three and a half million payments. And uh, we, the, the one figure that we are all proud of is actually we have had only 12 mismatches so far for various reasons, uh, So we, which we have ad subsequently addressed. Um, and we have collected around one and a half billion dollars uh, worth of payments so far. Um, and uh, uh, because it's a government agency, there is plenty of audits and compliance related stuff. To, um, to begin with, we had our ISO 27000 or ISMS audit that we went through, then the PCI DSS, which hopefully in a week's time will get certified. So those were the outcomes that those are the outcomes rather that we have achieved so far. And in this process, as I said, we set out to consolidate the payments across different agencies in the government sector. We have been successfully able to do that. Um, the other part is uh, the reduction of total cost of ownership. So uh, this entire thing, the peak size of this setup has been not more than 10 people from the product side. So we have just got three roles, a designer, a product manager, and a, and a, a bunch of software engineers. So all the typical roles that we see in terms of UI, UX, this designer, all get combined into product design. And similarly, on the engineering side, I'm and sorry, on guys. The, yep. sorry to interrupt. Yep. The yep. session was amazing. Thanks for the wonderful insight, especially the okay. work you have done for the agencies, for the government. But um, we'll have to start with the other session because the time is about to end in a minute. Okay. Sure. Um, but it was commendable. It was so insightful that the work you have done for which used to take months, but you didn't like um, in few minutes, the integration which you're doing in product and the broad environment and everything. Cool very wonderful kudos to that thank you for having here and having us 